enjoy the show, but I have a couple of friends who'd also like to say another message. Please silence your phones and other electronic devices other than cameras. And enjoy the show. <laughs> Parents sign up will be on the round table so that it doesn't have to be congested in this room. Thank you again and enjoy the show. The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows. And no birds ever sing except in gold crows. Is the street of the lifted Lorax? I am the. I am. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, <laughs> if you look deep enough, you can still see it today, where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. I am actually the Lorax. What was the Lorax, and why was it there, and why was it lifted and taken somewhere, from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old onceler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. I do not know. <laughs> you won't see the onceler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkin, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muff moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail. You have to toss in 15 cents and a nail. And the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes the most careful count, to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides where you paid him, away in his snub, his secret, strange hole, and his grubbyless gloves. Sorry. Then he grunts. I'll call you by whisper in my phone for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slup, down slups the whisper in my phone to your ear, and the old onceler's whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snurgly hose. <laughs> And he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you. He says with his teeth sounding gray. How the Lorax fell him and take him away. Okay. It all started way back. Such a long, long time ago. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped 
down a truffle a tree with one shot. And with great skillful skill, and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a sneeze. <laughs> the instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump <laughs> of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. He said to me, I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset. And he shouted and puffed, What's that thing you've made out of my truffle tuck? Look, Florex. I said. There's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree and doing no harm. I'm being quite useful as a thing in its name. The name is a fine thing that some, is a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. No, there is no one on earth who would buy that fool need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, two chaps came along, and they thought that the need I had knitted was great. They happily bought it for $3.98. <laughs> I laughed at the Lorax, you poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. The Lorax said, I'm the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him, shut up if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, built a radio phone, I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, Listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole one of family and only to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunzler family was working full tilt. We were all in ink needs just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Yeah. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. <laughs> We were making fneeds four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week, the Lorax knocked on my new office door. And he said to me, I'm the Lorax, I speak for the trees. Which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots, who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily live eating truffle of fruits. Yeah, like, like, now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruit to go around. And my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Gas. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. So the Lorax said, so I'm sending them off. and he sent them away. I, the Wunzler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies in tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of the sneeze I shipped out, I was shipping them forth, to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes. When that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes, he said to me, I'm the Lorax, I speak for the trees. He coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snarled, he sniffed. Once, sir, he cried with a cruffulous croak. Once, sir, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swami swans. Why, they can't sing a note. 
No one can sing who has smog in his throat. The Lorax said to the Swami Swams, they cannot live here. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup also schloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old onesler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hums. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. The Lorax said to the humming fish, So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax, now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say, Bad, 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 bad! Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on... Biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffle or trees in the needs, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an ax on a tree. Oh, yeah. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle tree of them all. No more trees, no more sneeds, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye they jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smuggered stars. I will do it for a little bit. Show the ones that are going to be nice. Now all that was left beneath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a smile, small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. But that was long, long ago. Each day, ever since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the onesler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So catch. Calls the onesler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle seed. It's the last one of all. Mama. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds and truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. Yeah.